Those are both boy penguins. I'm sorry? Tux and Flipper are both boys. So you should have pronounced them husband and husband, technically. We used to regard the penguins as being quite monogamous. It transpires that they're not quite as loyal to their partners as we first thought. But one couple is different. Spike and Rudd have stayed loyal for their entire lives. They'll both be in there. It's always the same box. At the back behind the waterfalls, their little desired residence. Spike's now 19. And Rudd's 22. They're the oldest pairing on the island. Penguins don't normally live beyond 15 in the wild. Because of his old age, the keepers are concerned that Rudd may not last another winter. This morning, Spike is alone, and Rudd is nowhere to be seen. Mr. Rudd! Rudd, Rudd! You're in bed still. A bit lazy this morning. In recent years, Rudd's developed arthritis in his hips. He's finding it increasingly difficult to get around the enclosure. The keepers have come to take Rudd to the vet's clinic. Rudd! Go on, good boy. Come on, go on. Come on. Go on, off you go. Good boy. You know where you're going. See you later. Have fun. Whee! Go on then. Go and find Spike. Go on. Oh. There you go. Straight in the water. Hey, eh? He's gone straight in. Brilliant. Going for a swim. They clearly wanted to be together because that was the first thing that Rudd did was go and find Spike. They were happy to see each other. There are many biologists and scientists who worry about what may be lost with the current extinction of frogs. Jeffrey Bonner of the St. Louis Zoo in the USA shares John Shine's concerns. Oh, take a virus like HIV. We tested 14 different frogs and found out that a third of them produced a peptide, a substance on their skin, that completely inhibited the transmission of HIV cells, virus cells, from dendritic to T cells. In other words, they stopped the transmission of HIV. One of my favorite medical examples is the potential for frogs to stop the absorption of nutrients. The best example would be gastric brooders. These were frogs that swallowed their young, and then the young produced a substance that shut down mom's digestive tract. That's pretty amazing, because those frogs could have held the key to the treatment of obesity, which has so many implications for so many different health-related problems. Uh, unfortunately, there are no gastric brooders left. The average cockroach is twice the size of a jewel wasp, so Ripley must rely on stinging Carl with a powerful venom. Strong. Yeah. Mm. Ripley stung him right under his head. This helps to paralyze him so he can't escape. Ripley's venom blocks a neurotransmitter in Carl's brain keeping him alive, but making him sluggish and slow moving. When Ripley stings Carl, she basically just turns him into a zombie. She stung him for a second time and then began to cut off his antenna. The wasp will cut off the cockroach's antenna as a way of limiting any chance they could escape. There will be small droplets of blood of Carl coming out at the end of, of the antenna. And yeah, Ripley will be drinking that. That will be the refreshment drink for her. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Should we drag it? Yeah, yeah, she's dragging, she's just pulling it into the tube. and then she started to drag him into a burrow, which is a small little tube that we put in there just so we can see what they're doing. That's good, that's really good.
even Africa's most formidable predator, occasionally turns to the dark side. These Herculean beasts are brothers. Together, they protect their territory and their family. But there's one rule that every male lion must learn. Your siblings' females are strictly off limits. And this lioness is already taken. But the younger brother wants some action. He decides to take the law into his own hands. He makes his move. But he's overstepping the mark. Big brother is watching. Attempting to steal a mate has its consequences. Brothers turn from partners into enemies. makes it clear this female is not up for grabs <laughs> 